My next patron question is from Morgan, who wants me to compare two horror trilogies. Full Moon Features has created many B-movie franchises, but two stand out to me personally. I'm curious to know which you feel is better, the Subspecies Trilogy or the first three Puppet Master movies. I have to confess, I've not delved that deeply into the films produced by Full Moon Features, Charles Band's production company that specializes in low-budget genre films, so I was definitely curious how I would feel about these two series of films. The one I found myself getting more enjoyment out of was Subspecies. While I did find the first Subspecies a tad underwhelming, there were some things I admired about it. What Elman's first film gains points in is the atmosphere. The movie was filmed in Romania. The filmmakers took advantage of the castles and other locations to give it that appropriate vampire movie look. The lead character, Michelle, is able to be interesting as she deals with the strange goings-on. There are also a couple of neat special effects that pop up, and they even got Greg Canham, one of Hollywood's best makeup artists, to do the makeup effects. However, I found the main villain, Radu, to be pretty silly. He comes across like Nosferatu's less cool cousin. I also felt it was a missed opportunity when he turned Michelle's friends into vampires, as there are not too many scenes of them in that form, and I would like to have seen more moments of them in action. I did wind up liking Subspecies 2. Michelle dealing with becoming a vampire herself and trying to cope with this development was well handled, along with the other major storyline of her sister Becky trying to find her. Radu becomes a more threatening presence in the sequel, with him often lurking in the shadows in pursuit of Michelle. The story also introduces his mother, who is like something out of an Evil Dead movie. The special effects featured in the first ten minutes are really impressive, and the rest of the film is no slouch either in the visual department. Subspecies 2 checked off the necessary boxes for a successful vampire movie for me. I was all primed and ready to enjoy the third movie, especially since it begins right after the events of the second one. Unfortunately, I was majorly disappointed with what followed. Rod went back to being a silly villain in Subspecies 3, and even his mother took a serious downgrade. The idea of Michelle needing Radu's services to learn how to become a vampire is not a bad idea, but I thought it made some unusual decisions, like Radu somehow falling in love with Michelle, which I personally found to be unearned. Meanwhile, Becky's storyline turns into a dull police investigation story, and the police lieutenant, who I thought was a solid character in Subspecies 2, is made into a bit of an annoying comic relief. The final 30 minutes especially turned into a slog for me, without any of the excitement you would hope for in a final confrontation with a vampire. Oh well, at least Subspecies 2 was a winner in my book. As for Puppet Master, this series also had its ups and downs for me. The highlights of the first Puppet Master movie are definitely the puppets, which are creative and brought to life with some solid stop-motion animation. The filmmakers came up with quite a few gruesome scenes they do away with their victims. However, they're not on screen for very long. The rest of the film consists of following these psychics around the hotel, who I found to be extremely dull characters. The final villain reveal also did absolutely nothing for me. I found Puppet Master 2 to be a notable improvement, as it follows a group of paranormal investigators. I found these characters to be a lot more interesting than the psychics. The puppets get a lot more screen time here, and I like seeing the investigators try to understand who these strange beings are. The creator Toulon comes back from the dead, and the film is probably at its most entertaining when he's on screen, thanks to Steve Wells playing up the mad scientist angle. Where the story went near the end was intriguing, and while most of the acting is still not particularly good and there were some slow parts, I was entertained through most of it. Despite Puppet Master 2 ending on a cliffhanger, the third movie is actually a prequel, with Toulon in Berlin during World War II. The idea of the puppets going up against Nazis has so much potential to be a fun B-movie, and yet I found the result to be incredibly boring. A lot of the movie consists of dull conversations in rooms, and very little of what transpired on screen excited me. I will admit there are some really good stop-motion effects on the puppets, the best in these three films. Guy Rolfe and Ian Abercrombie also turn in good performances, despite the dialogue they're required to say. Otherwise, Puppet Master 3 felt like a waste of a good idea. It's interesting how similar my opinions on these three movies wound up being. Slightly underwhelming first movie with a bit of creativity in the technical department, much improved sequel, more interesting characters and situations, and then boring third film. I did not mind taking this journey through the first three movies of these franchises, though, and it's clear the love Full Moon founder Charles Band and his crew put into these. Now let me know in the comments whether you prefer the Puppet Master or the Subspecies series, and thank you for your question, Morgan.